If you are new here, this channel is all about educative stuffs. So don't forget to subscribe, hit that notification bell and smash that like button for instant updates. Hello guys, welcome to another video in Code 4 and this video is going to be about input and output devices. So without further ado, let's start. In this video, we'll be talking about what are input devices, input devices and in the second part of the video, we'll be talking about output devices. So let's move on. What are input and output devices? So this doesn't require an explanation since most of them know what these are, but input devices are basically devices which get an input from the user. And output devices are devices which shows an output to the user. So in input devices there are many examples like mouse, keyboard, camera, touch screens and etc. And in output devices if you are seeing this video in your phone then the display in it is an output device. If you are seeing this in a computer then a monitor. So we will be seeing about each things more detail in the forthcoming slides. Jumping on to the input devices, the first input device which are going to see is the 2D and 3D scanners. 2D scanners are scanners which convert a 2D surface or a document into a digital form. Most of the 2D scanners work with the principle of color and light, which means white surface reflects light and black surface absorbs light. Let's take the document scanner as an example. When the document is first placed inside the document scanner, the a white light will be illuminated on it. So since the white surface reflects light and black surface absorbs light, the bounced black or the, lift or the reflected light will be captured by the light sensors and will be processed accordingly to generate a digital form of the document which you have placed to scan. When you use a barcode reader, or a scanner the same thing done by the document scanner is done here too while scanning a barcode using the barcode scanner the red light will be illuminated on it as we know white surface reflects light and black surface absorbs light the reflected light will be sensed and processed accordingly to know the information stored in the barcode Coming on to 3D scanners, 3D scanners are totally different from 2D scanners because 2D scanners use light to scan the document but 3D scanners use X-rays, gamma rays and radio frequencies to scan the model. So how does this 3D scanner scan a 3D model is that the X-rays, gamma rays which are being shined onto the 3D scanner will be interpreted by sensors and it will create a set of 2D images or slices like shown in this image. This is a model of, uh, of a 3D human face. So this is how the slices will be generated by the uh, X-rays or gamma rays that are being uh, shined onto the model. And these slices are just a set of 2D images and these set of 2D images will be stored as a digital form in the computer so that later when you see the bunch of 2D images uh, like layers onto layers it will appear to be a 3D image for you. Moving on to quick response code or commonly known as QR code is an extension of the barcodes. They just look like black squares painted onto a white sheet but they are very special and very effective method of advertising and are gaining popularity nowadays because of the amount of data it can store within the square. A barcode can only store up to 30 digits of data but this QR code can store up to 7000 digits of data. And if you are going to a public place and if you are interested in some kind of advertisements and wanted to visit a website instead of typing the website and wasting time you can just scan the QR code and go to the desired website you wish to. So 
so please do check out this qr code and this and this qr code will lead you to a website which is full of information and great knowledge please do visit it coming on to digital cameras digital cameras are used to take photographs and if you have ever wondered how a photograph is taken by a camera this is the slide that will answer you at the first place what happens is that the light will enter into the lens and the light entered into the lens will enter into a small kind of hole called the aperture this aperture can be linked to your eye pupil so what your eye pupil does is that if you enter a dark room the pupil of your eye will be wide open so that it can allow more light and see the dark room more clearly and that is what this aperture to does and the light entered from the aperture will go through the mirror and this mirror will allow light as well as reflect light and the reflected light will again be reflected by this mirror so the photographer can see the image which he is going to take and the allowed light will be blocked by a shutter so once the photographer clicks the capture button the shutter will be open and the light will be touching the sensor and the sensor is made up of light sensitive cells which contains a millions of number of cells and these cells are made up of pixels and these pixels capture the image and send it to the microprocessor and a small note is that the more the pixel the more the resolution of the image so if the resolution of the image is higher then the amount of information stored will also be higher so what the microprocessor does is it will compress the image and store it inside the camera so that the requirements of the storage can be satisfied coming on to a most commonly used and a well known input device the keyboards it is still now the most common method for data entry and even though it is the most common and many of them use it most of them doesn't know how it works and that is what we're going to talk about in this slide so when you press a key in a keyboard each key is considered as a switch so when a character is pressed in the keyboard the switch is turned on so what happens is the a circuit will be completed and the signal of that will be sent to the microprocessor in your cpu and that microprocessor will interpret the electrical signal received and it will determine the character with the ascii value ascii value is nothing but a universal value given to each of the character inside the keyboard for example 0 is considered to be 48 and there are many more ascii values for each and every key inside your keyboard so even though they are most common they do share a pretty damaging disadvantage that is the repetitive strain injury if you frequently use these kind of devices without any rest then these kind of injuries can be caused and these can be avoided like if you are in a profession like it then you will have to code for hours and that cannot be ignored so what you can do is you can use an ergonomic keyboard which is more comfortable and it will avoid you from these kind of injuries so yes let's move on to the next input device pointing devices the two major examples of it which is commonly used is the mouse and the tracker ball so what are pointing devices and what is it used for pointing devices are used to allow a user to click and interact with the software so talking on about the mouses mouses use a led as shown in the picture to detect movement in the x and y direction which will then be sent to the computer to move the cursor in the display but the main disadvantage of the mouse is that they require a specific surface like mouse mat since surfaces such as paper doesn't allow the mouse to do the correct operation of the device but tracker balls doesn't need these surfaces to move a cursor and also we no need to move the device we just need to rotate or roll the ball at the top to move the cursor in the screen so this is all about pointing devices hope you understood and let's move on to the next input device
Microphone. Microphones are used to input sound into a computer and they do it by converting sound signals into digital format which is zeros and ones so the computer can understand it. It is not very complicated as you think. It's pretty simple and most of you would have understood it by just seeing the images. So what happens is that when the, wave, when the sound waves are created and passes through the microphone, the diaphragm vibrates and this vibration causes an electrical signal to be produced and this electrical signal will be carried on through a wire to the sound card. This sound card can also be called as ADC which is analog to digital converter. What this does is it will convert the electrical signals into zeros and ones so that the computer can understand and these signals will be given to the computer so that it can do the task that it needs to be done with these inputs. See I told it simple and yes. Let's move on to the next input device. Coming on to the next input device, touch screens. There are three types of touch screens, capacitor, infrared and resistor. So the first type which you are going to see is the capacitor. A capacitor touch screen has layers of glasses where electric fields are in between them. And these electric fields make those glasses act like a capacitor. So what happens is once you touch the screen, there, there will be an electric field change and that change will be determined by the microprocessor. And that microprocessor will process the information it has got and it will determine the exact location where the user has touched it. And that coordinates will be sent to the operating system. The benefits of using the uh, capacitor touchscreen is that it is medium cost and the screen visibility is good at strong sunlight and it allows multi touch capabilities and it is very durable. But the only drawback is that you can use it only with your bare fingers or in special stylus. You cannot use it when you are wearing gloves on your hands. So coming on to the next touchscreen, infrared. In infrared, there are two types of touchscreens, heat sensitive and optical. In heat sensitive touchscreens, it just needs a hot object or a warm object to carry out an input. But in optical, it needs an array of infrared sensors positioned right opposite to the infrared beams. So when a user touches it, the infrared emitted from the beams will not be received by the opposite sensors. This information is used to determine the coordinates of the point of touch. The main benefits of the infrared touch screen is that they both allow multi-touch capabilities and the optical system allows bare fingers, loud fingers or a stylish for input and the both heat sensitive and optical has a very good screen durability. But the main drawback is that both are relatively expensive technology and the heat sensitive touch screens only allows the use of bare fingers and both systems have a fairly good screen visibility and strong sunlight. So yes, this is all about infrared and let's move on to resistive. Resistive touch screens make use of upper layer of polyester or film and a bottom layer of glass. So what happens when a user touches is that the top layer and the bottom layer comes to contact completing a circuit and these signals will be sent to a microprocessor where the microprocessor will interpret and determine the coordinates of where the screen was touched. And the main benefits of the resistive touch screen is that it is a cheap technology and it is possible to use bare fingers, loud fingers or a stylus to carry out an input operation. But the main drawback is that the screen visibility is very poor in strong sunlight and it doesn't permit multi-touch capabilities and the screen durability is only fair enough. And this is all about touch screens and let's move on to the next input device. Sensors. Sensors are basically devices which measure a physical property and tell it to the microprocessor or the computer. These values include temperature, pH, pressure and etc. So whatever sensor it is and wherever you use it, the basic fundamental thing that happens when sending the sensor's information to the processor is that the analog data from the sensors will be converted into a digital form using the ADC which is analog to digital converter and then sent to the microprocessor to process it. 
So sensors have various applications, but they all come under any of the two types, which is the monitoring systems or the control systems. Monitoring system is where a set or a single sensor according to the application will give the information to the microprocessor where the microprocessor will then check the values are within range or not. If the values are within range then nothing happens. If the values are out of range then the microprocessor will do the instructed guidelines set by the program. For an example let's take the burglar alarm system. So the burglar alarm system has a set of uh, sensors and if these values from the sensors are within range then nothing happens. But if it is out of range then the siren goes off. So what is happening here is that if the values are out of range the siren goes off but that siren doesn't change the values coming from the sensors but it is the opposite in the control system. In a control system what happens is that if the values are out of range then the control system will take actions to get those values from the sensors within the range. So let's take an apartment with a monitoring system for an example. In an apartment there is a smoke sensor and it has detected a fire in the apartment. And the monitoring system will just call off for a siren. But in a control system it will turn on the water sprinkler in the apartment to extinguish the fire. So after the fire is extinguished then what happens is then automatically the smoke sensor will tell that there is no fire in the apartment but previously it has told there is a fire in the apartment. So the actions done by the control system has changed the values or altered the values within the range. So this is what a control system does and this is what a monitoring system does. Hope you have understood about this and this is the end of input devices. Thank you.